Yo, bang your doors and free the one and only Kyle Chase, aka Chase, aka Kyle Mondoon. Look at this headline, courtesy of RA. When I saw this, my jaw hit the floor. Kyle Chase, owner of Liverpool Club Spray Shop, gets 12 year sentence. 12 year sentence for drug trafficking. Free Kyle Chase. And in case you're wondering, I can see who's Kyle Chase. Kyle Chase is the founder and owner of this very popular Liverpool club. It only launched, I think, a couple of years ago or maybe last year, um, called The Spray Shop. I actually spoke about The Spray Shop on this podcast, I think, when it first opened. And Kyle reached out to me in the DMs on Instagram, and we exchanged some chat about the clubs and nightlife in general. He invited me to come up there and he looked after me and shit for whatever went to Liverpool. And I was actually looking forward to going and check out the club in Central. And just generally being a kind of a sound lad. So I kind of know him with fucking Instagram DMs. So that's all I was like, no, what the fuck? You know what I mean? I never fucking get reached out by fucking clubs to do anything, let alone to like, hey, if you come in, we'll give you a fucking VIP treatment. We'll let you go in front of the queue. We might give you a free bottle of fucking Pepsi and shit. I was looking forward to it. We might give you free cloakroom. I was fucking pumped to go to Liverpool and hang out and fucking be vibing with the mandem over there. And look, bang, the guy gets locked up for 12 years. I'm like, shit. But it's a kind of a badass sentence. I'm not going to lie. He's going to come out a fucking legend. He's going to come out like fucking Pablo Escobar. It says here, the subtext, the subtitle says, Chase, a.k.a. Carl Mondoon, was dealing in multi-kilo quantities of cocaine, heroin, cannabis, and ketamine, Judge Gary Walden concluded last week. You know what I conclude? That combination of drugs, for me, is what we call a party pack. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. But that combination of drugs, to me, sounds like your quintessential party pack. Imagine, 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 imagine if you get booked to play at Chase's Club, Spray Club. Imagine if you get booked to play at Spray Shop. Those are the best clubs to get booked at. Not only do they give you money, not only do they give you money, not only do they give you exposure, that's the type of club where they come to you in the green room and they give you a little bag. Like an actual goodie. You know, like you back in there when you're a kid and people would like give you little birthday bags. Like, you know, maybe sometimes, I don't know if you guys got them, but I sometimes got them. And it might be full of, I don't know, sweets. You might get a little toy in there, whatever, right? This is the one time you go to a club. Not only would they pay you, not only would they maybe put you up accommodation wise, not only would they give you a platform to play for a crowd of people, maybe gain you fans, you also get a little baggie with little baggies inside. Get it? Party pack? You might get a little hat and little baggies <laughs> of cocaine, heroin, cannabis, and ketamine. Covered the entire bases. Every base has been covered. What an absolute G. Now, personally, if that was me and my obviously dream and aspirations to open my own nightclub, I wouldn't personally do that. I wouldn't, you know, b- blur the lines. I'm not going to be in there dealing with this malarkey. It would just be a platform to do like what Rogan does and essentially just book yourself, right? It's, it's, it's a selfish pursuit. You obviously have it to serve the community, but it's actually a platform for you just to just go up as much as you want and perform <laughs> day in, night out, night in, every weekend, every fucking month every fucking day of the year but in this regard i fucking rate it i rate the whole time that i was talking to this guy not only was he booking djs and running his club and running a business and djing himself on the slide on the side he was also getting in units shifting absolute units of drugs and the good thing i like about this judging from what i can read on the article he didn't snitch he went down himself for 12 years I don't, there's no big conspiracy. He's not part of some like um, county lines operation. There's not some big, you know what I mean? It's just him. So either he fucking didn't snitch and, and, and held it down, or he was running the whole drug operation while also running a nightclub, while also DJing, while also booking people himself. That you have to rate. That you have to rate. It doesn't, it doesn't often happen, but you have to rate that he took those 12 years like a man. And most likely, especially the UK system, how it is, with good behavior, he could get out a bit earlier. The only problem that he has, the only problem that he has is that reading the article, he has got previous offenses. So maybe he might be a bit fucked there. But I think if he does on good behavior and shit, I think he should be out before the 12 years. But anyway, let's read the article. Kyle Chase, owner of Liverpool club Spray Shop, has been jailed for drug trafficking. 
Chase, aka Carl Mondoon, um, was given a 12 year sentence, eight months, um, and 12 years and eight months. God damn it. And Liverpool Crown Court last Thursday, July 25th, the Liverpool Echo reports. Chase admitted conspiracy to supply heroin, cocaine, ketamine, and cannabis using encrypted messaging network EncroChat. Oh, fuck. Not another EncroChat bus, man. I'm sure some of you guys remember this, but EncroChat was this encrypt, supposed encrypted communication platform that you could only use on particular smartphones. And I think you had to buy them from Darknet as well. And they were like, I don't know how much they were. But whatever reason, these drug dealers who are usually pretty smart, they actually thought it was legitimately in, like unhackable. It was fully encrypted, which it obviously wasn't. But what I remember the story, what happened is that during the pandemic, yeah, that's what happened. Allegedly, loads of drug dealers, especially across Europe, were using this um, network or this messaging app called EncroChat that only ran on Pacific phones. You had to buy a Pacific phone that you used, right? And I think what happened, if I remember correctly, watching all my documentaries on YouTube, allegedly, the feds were able to crack and hack into EncroChat and take loads of fucking dealers and wholesalers and whatever down and gangs and shit and basically disrupt the whole drugs flow system in Europe for like a good six months during the pandemic. Because allegedly during the pandemic, business was booming, right? Those drugs were moving around because people were bored, didn't have stuff to do. But if I'm not, rem if I'm remembering my law correctly, they did a bus on a particular drug dealer and that drug dealer, unfortunately, had his phone open. The drug dealer had his phone open. It wasn't locked. And they did a bust. The drug dealer had his phone on the side. And then when they were going through his phone, they saw the app. They saw everyone talking and saying what they were saying, arranging deals. And that's how they were able to get in through that one guy's phone that he left his phone open. So that one guy leaving his phone open and not locking it is what took down entire fucking drug operations, gangs, syndicates are just running and moving millions, if not billions of fucking drugs, especially during the pandemic where everyone was fucking doing drugs and going crazy at home. So it's wild that he's now being brought up on this because this must mean he was being investigated for a while, for a while, for a while. That's what it means, That's re which is really crazy. He's only getting convicted now because either, either, they're still, either, either people are still using EncoTrack now or this is a bus from time ago that they finally come to resolution now at the end. But either way, free fucking chase, free chase. It continues. He was linked to the username Free Fat Ladies um, after contacts referred to him as Fat Kyle and by his DJ alias Eldon. Oh, come on, man. That's like me trying to sell drugs under the fucking pseudonym HBM, Handsome Black Man, something, right? My, my kind of other. D it's like, come on, bro, you can't do that. You have to be completely detached from who you are, like completely detached. You can't be calling yourself DJ Eldon on your fucking Telegram username thingy. Come on, bro. His criminal record spans six previous convictions for 16 offenses, including five years for conspiracy to commit robbery and three years for possession of crack cocaine and intent to supply. I'm not going to lie. This is how I want my fucking club owners. I don't want my club owners to be straight laced, sober people. I want my club owners. I want my bar owners to be like this. Now, do I want my bar managers to be like this? No. I want my club owners to be like this, but I don't want the people running the business to be like this. Because I think when you go to clubs that are run by like gangsters and like, you know, crackheads and shit, it can be a little bit off. But when somebody owns it that's like that, the vibe can be fun because there's somebody that's doing the day-to-day, -day, making sure the stock is replenished, paying stuff, you know, handling the stuff. Like an actual bar manager, club manager, that's good. But the owner, I want them to be on the fucking front line. You have to have some skin in the fucking game. You have to be moving weight. You have to be importing, allegedly, some tablets that aren't fucking paracetamol. That's what I want to see. <laughs> uh, it continues. Chase was dealing in multi-kilo quantities of cocaine, heroin, cannabis, and ketamine, Judge Gary Woodall concluded. You've clearly developed a skill set in the music industry and you were enjoying a degree of success. It seems you had found your calling and were working hard to, to legitimize to in a legitimate business. No doubt that has now all been taken away because of the sentence I'm about to impose. No, it hasn't. That's the thing. That's the thing. Once he comes out, he'll be fine. He just has to sit down long enough um, to kind of still be around, keep himself out of trouble and shit. Once he comes out, he'll be a fucking legend. He'll be adored. He'll be fuck. There'll be tales spread about him throughout the fucking tech house, house scene, whatever else it is out there in Liverpool. There's no way he's coming out there and not just getting back on the saddle and doing what needs to be done. Come on, bro. Come on. 
This guy's an entrepreneur. And the scene, this is what it's about. Um, take, um, taking over what was formerly a garage shop, the fringe capacity spray shop opened next to Bramley Moor Dock last February. The likes of Dungeon Meat, um, Voitman, um, Kilimanjaro, and Lauren, so- L- Lauren Lo Song have played there in recent months. The club is closed until further notice, according to Instagram page. By the way, that's also a perfect number for a club. 500 to 750, maybe 500, I'd say. That's the kind of capacity I'm aiming for when I eventually open up my club. That's a nice amount, nice capacity. You know, where on weekdays, it could be half full. Weekends, it could be super full. But it's got a nice, intimate sort of vibe. If you're a dealer, <laughs> you've got loads of prospective clients you can shop to and shit. I fucking love it. So big up, big up fucking Kyle. Free fucking Kyle. Free Kyle. Bang your fucking chest. You'll be out soon, brother. Hold your fucking head. Hold your fucking head. Um, big up Proven187 in the chat as well. Um, oh, uh, Proven says you get out in five years on good behavior. Um, big up Proven. Um, what are saying here? iPhone 6 could be... Okay, I, I didn't know... I think the documentary that I watched, they said you can only use Anchor Chat particular phone. But um, Proven here is saying you could use Anchor Chat on iPhone 6. Um, the guy that you know got caught was Mr. Big. Okay, they convicted my cousin after three years of going court case. This guy had a tuck shop off drugs. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So I guess Anchor Chat people are still being convicted now, right? I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. Um, so big up all the Anchor Chat dealers. Hold your head up. Hope you guys don't get long sentences. And when you do bus case, when you do land road, there'll be a big, big, big social party pack waiting for you the scene is there ready to lord and applaud these guys because this is the part of the culture in most of the places that we're at you know how it is you know how it is so big up kyle and big up everybody else connected to the spray shop hopefully everybody lands on their feet once this guy's sentence is over we can only hope we can only hope 